it'll never get done until we're ultimately done like dead yes. so curious to know so that's a segue to men's work share with us a little bit about your journey to pet, uh, men's work yeah so again i'll articulate like the masculine or the alpha energy is the void resting consciousness it's emptiness and then the feminine or the omega energy is everything in that void it's the creation it's the stars being born and the stars being blown apart and all of that and so most individual everyone has a balance of these en energies in them but most people identify as mask as men have a greater degree of masculine energy and most people identify as women have a greater degree of female energy but to be clear these aren't really gendered their energies like you could think of them like the poles on a battery the positive and the negative or the masculine or the feminine or whatever i grew up more identified with my mom and so i'm a man with a lot of there's a i have a lot of masculine energy i've later discovered but i identified with my feminine range and and so for most of my life, I was very sensitive and well, I still am, but like very sensitive, very um, concerned about not being a shithead. And when I say shithead, I mean like the man who fucks the woman and then leaves her, the guy that just blatantly checks out a woman. And, and so I learned to do all of this stuff to never offend and be the right man based on the standards of neo-femininity. I don't even know if neo-femininity is a thing, but whatever don't be that dickhead guy be this and what i started to notice one there was like a real breakdown in my marriage when i talked about no intimacy i was not exaggerating there was no intimacy there was no sex but there was also no emotional intimacy we were we resonated like twin flames so we had a lot of resonance but no polarity is like the spark created between the two poles of the battery if you had a plus and a plus battery nothing would happen there would be no circuit that got created and so that was how my relationship was my wife operated she'd learned to masculinize herself as many women do in the current kind of climate after business world and i'd learned to feminize myself and we were both hanging out in middle and so i was drawn to men's work because i could feel that there was something available and i knew that i had some kind of disempowered relationship with the masculine but i didn't really know what it was i can share more but i want to see if there's anything you want to direct me towards now that i've said that bit it has been an adventure with my wife i'm i'm really delighted to share we've really turned a corner in the last year but we've been working on this peace this intimacy for a decade probably and hey that's the nature of being a leader and a coach is that we're continually a work in progress and progressing in our work and originally i started doing men's work and she thought it was stupid which is totally not any of a criticism for her when your man comes home and starts like doing breathing exercises like ego eradicator or Wim Hof breathing or something. And I can imagine that would occur as quite stupid. And so initially she had a lot of resistance to it. And I even brought her to a co-ed workshop led by my teacher at the time, who's named John Wineland, who's a brilliant man. And she resisted it. She really was like unwilling to play with the feminine energy in part because she had a disempowered relationship to the feminine, just like I had a disempowered relationship to the masculine. And as we've worked at this, we've made steps together. Initially, her resistance, I was like, it's stupid that you're resistant. You should do this. And then, of course, what do you do when someone shows up that way with you? You tighten down further on your own resistance because you're right about it because they're making you wrong about it. And and so we've just learned to get better at being with each other through that. I've learned to let off my attachment and she's learned to surrender to me a little bit more, be more open to what I'm bringing for us. And to the point where we are today is we've been currently working with another teacher and he does what he calls two-bodied practice. So you can do all this work by yourself, but to the point we were initially talking about, when you bring another person into it, now there's energy in the space. And every morning we sit for 20 minutes and and do you could think of it as maybe tantric practice or like the i would call it my teacher calls it the yoga of intimacy mm -hmm. so using just our breath we're creating polarity with one another which is really profound because societally we have all this fucking baggage around sex and mm -hmm. so that and that's where we look to try to create intimacy but it's like trying to work with centimeters using two tanks it's just it's hard to get to the nuance mm -hmm. and so with this kind of practice using our breath, it's amazing what can get created when we when you get to that level of being connected with each other. Uh, so that's where we're at today. Yeah, go ahead. What does it look like? I, I don't understand the role yeah. in the yoga of intimacy, but working with your breath, do you mean like synchronized breathing? Do you mean breathing yeah. together? Like, can you say a little bit more about that? 
Yeah. So here's one practice that we do every morning, which is, or one of the practices we'll sit across from each other. And the first, the bedrock of polarity is presence. If you're not present with each other, there cannot be polarity. So we start there. So we set a timer of 10 minutes. And at first Bay, my wife is working with me. And first she's giving me feedback on how present I am. How much does she feel me present with her? And she might be like, what I would need is to feel your breath more. What I would need is to see you stop fidgeting. And then once she feels me present, then she's shifting into giving me feedback to have me embodying more of the masculine energy. And there's three pieces of feedback she gives me to support that. One is she wants more breath from me. That's the heart of masculine energy is the depth of our breath. Two, she can say, I want more of your heart. She wants more of my warmth. And three, she can say she wants more of my balls, more of the part of me that would kill for her, the ferocity that is part of the masculine energy, the part of me that I killed because I identified all with my mom and not with my dad. And then once that's done, so she's making me trustable as a man, meaning she feels she could show me anything and I could receive it open-hearted, but without being blown out by it. And then we switch and now I give her feedback for 10 minutes, first to bring her to presence if she's not there. And then I'm asking for more light, more dark. So exploring the range of the feminine expression or more expression. And I'll just put a little tail note on this where most men shut their women down is where I want all of her fullness. But then if she brings us her darkness, we're like, whoa, no, don't shout. Or, or we try to fix them. And it's, oh, we can't see that we're masculinizing them. We're pushing them towards this stoic, don't bring your darkness. And so it's a beautiful practice to have her. Sometimes she's shoving me in that container of practice. And, and so that's an example of how we practice.